Ready, set, get wet with Simeon Corby and Elaine Hill. Welcome to the first in a brand new series of Get Wet. I know, Sim, I can see in all that time your shirts have not improved. Well, I thought I'd kick the new series off with my Hawaii Five O shirt, you yeah. <laughs> know. Calm down. This is officially the wettest game show on television. So wet, in fact, it's wetter than a frog's armpit. Yeah, that would be wet, yeah. And what a lovely thought. Why don't you go and sort the first game out? Okay, And before we play that first game, just come up here. I want to show you this, give you a poke around on our genuine, bona fide, real-life shipwreck. You see, somewhere hidden on this shipwreck is the key to this week's star prize. It's the top booty. It is the Big Kahuna. Now, the way it works is both our teams will be battling it out today, gaining points, winning prizes, and whichever team has the most points gets to search for that star prize up here on the shipwreck, but also, coolest of all, scuba diving down there amongst the wreckage next to the harbour wall. So let's meet the teams battling it out today on Get Wet. First of all, the green team are Jenny and Jonathan, the Davenport Dolphins! And the orange team are Sarah and Leon, the Chatteris Kingfishers! They look a little bit too dry for me. Let's kick off the action with the big splash. First of all, the teams have to come down the chute here and swim over to the valve. Turning the wheel because it operates the water cannon on the pontoon. And the reason these things are so much fun will become clear in just a second, but they've got a few more problems back at that end first. Then the teams have to get up this slippery ramp but they won't have a rope to help them. And along the way, they're collecting doubloons. They start off by finding a few bronze ones worth five points, and then, the further on they get, they start to find silver ones worth ten. Just like these babies, just above the balance bars. Work your way across, woo, all the way to the end. And then, jumping onto these huge wonder wheels. Work your way across the pool to the pontoon for swimmers at the moment. And when they get up here, they find this little baby here, a gold doubloon worth a whopping 20 points. Having picked that up, they can then get busy on the water cannon, making life rather tricky for those helpless people still on the Wonder Wheels. There are 100 points to be collected in this game. They're scattered all over the place, and the teams only have two minutes to collect them. So if our teams are standing by, let's give them a huge send-off as we say, ready, set, get ready! So the first challenge is to open those valves that have got to start on water cannons. The cannons are running. They have achieved that and already we have both teams up the ramp. It's neck and neck at this stage of the big splash. The Dolphins have collected their two silver doubloons and they make it successful on the balance bar as well. It's a flawless performance by both teams. There's nothing to decide between the Dolphins and the Kingfishers as all four contestants dive into the Wonder Wheel simultaneously. Now this is where the fun begins. Are they going to go for the doubloons in the water or head straight for the pontoon? The Dolphins are heading straight for the pontoon. That must be Jenny. Jenny's going to be first on the pontoon. She can't get out of her Wonder Wheel. She's pitched it and she's out. She can collect her 20 points and have fun with the water cannon. <laughs> Jonathan shouting instructions to Jenny. Blast the opposition, he's saying. Get busy with your water cannon. Still, none of the starfish team have made it to the pontoon. They don't seem to care. Wait a minute, here comes Leon. Leon's up there. OK, grab your 20 points. He's got them. Now, it's just a case of putting the opposition off while they're in the water, blasting them with those cannons. 
It all looks quite evenly matched. Leon is still trying to get to grips with his water cannon. <laughs> he's, he's giving Jonathan a mouthful of water. That's it! The time is up! It looked really evenly matched from up here. Let's see at this early stage in the show what the scoreboard looks like. Well, Sim, the Chatteris Kingfishers have 70 points, but the Davenport Dolphins have 80 points! Now, the more points you build up on the show, the more prizes you gain. Let's see what you can win on today's Get Wet. Level 1, 75 points, and you can draw your own conclusions with this funky pen set. Level 2, 100 points, net the prize and pick up this booty phone. Level 3, 125 points, splash down to win this swimming gear. And level 4, 150 points, snap the shutter to bag this snaptastic advanced camera. Hey, nice prizes. And another chance now for them to perhaps gain a few more points as we play Brainwave. The way this works is basically a true or false quiz. Now, Elaine and I have three statements all about general sport. The trouble is some of those statements are completely made up, aren't they? Yeah. All our teams have to do is decide which are true and which are false. They've nominated a spokesperson. Uh, we have Sarah for the orange team, the Kingfishers, and Jonathan for the Dolphins. I have to take the first answer you shout out on each occasion, but you can confer. Now, Dolphins, you're in the lead, so you'll go first. Your three statements. Christopher Dean of Torville and Dean used to be a fireman. True or false? False. It is false. He used to be a policeman, actually. In December 1996, Peter Shilton became the first footballer to play in 1,000 league matches when he kept goal for Leighton Orient against Brighton. True or false? True. It is true. Top <laughs> guess. You never really knew that, did you? <laughs> Good guess, though. And your final statement is Gary Lineker is the team captain on a question of sports. True or false? True. No. Oh, uh, oh well. I have to take your first answer, Jonathan. I have to take your first answer. It is false. I think you realise that at the last minute. It's, they think it's all over, of course. Anyway, good effort. Two out of three. OK, on his team. In the women's 100 metre hurdles, there are eight barriers. True or false? True. It is, it's true. The first Grand Prix held on a specially constructed circuit was at Le Mans in 1906. True or false? False. False. It's true, I'm afraid. In the discus event, the weight of the discus is the same for both men and women. True or false? False. False. It is. The men is two kilograms and the woman is only a kilogram. Well done. OK, so hopefully that should have affected the scoreboard. Let's find out how it stands from voiceover man. Well, here's how it is, Sim. The Kingfishers have 80 points, but still in the lead, the Dolphins with 90. So the gap remains the same. Yeah, but there's still more points to play for, and I'm going to go and check out the next game. OK. Yes, this is a game I've been looking forward to for quite a while, because this will be messy. It's time for our teams to play Pillow Plunge. This game is everyone's favourite, the classic pillow fight. As you can see, the contestants will be standing on this beam and the object of the game is to bash your opponent into the water. But to make it a little bit more tricky, the middle section has been greased, so it should be fun to watch. It certainly should. This is going to be great. Now, the teams get ten points for every time they successfully bash the opposition off the greasy pole and into the water. But only if they stay standing on the pole. If both the contestants fall into the pool, then no points are given. We have one minute for this madness, and it should be quite a laugh. OK, dolphins, kingfishers, if you're ready, set, get wet! <laughs>
so much fun. Quite evenly matched, though. Let's have a look at the scoreboard. Well, the Chatteris Kingfishers are on 100 points, but still in the lead, the Dolphins with 120. So, both teams have reached level two, and that means they have already snatched the pens and the footy phone. The swimming gear and Snaptastic camera still up for grabs. So, the prizes keep on coming. There's another chance for them to build up some points now as we enter round two of Brainwaves. It works a lot like round one, really. It's a true or false quiz between the two teams, but there is a slight difference, isn't there? Yeah, the difference is only one member from each team comes forward to play, and they'll be asked six questions at the same time. We have sat Jenny and Leon back to back because when you answer true or false in this round, you don't shout your answer out, you indicate your answer with a little light down here. If it's false, you light it red. If you think the answer is true, you light it green. This way, our contestants won't know what the other person is answering. We always have a watery theme for this round of Brainwaves, and today's theme is bridges. Six questions to each of you, five points per question, so a possible 30 points if you're standing by teams. Let's strain those brains. The Golden Gate Bridge is a suspension type bridge. True or false? The answer is true. The Hapenny Bridge spans the River Liffey in Dublin. True or false? It's true. Tower Bridge was sold to the Americans. True or false? It is false. Both correct. It was London Bridge that was sold to the Americans. You have to pay a toll to cross the bridge to the Isle of Skye. True or false? It's true. Another difference of opinion. The bridge of size is in Venice. True or false? It is true. The widest bridge in the world is Sydney Harbour Bridge in Australia. True or false? That one's true. So, you've both got the final question right, and you can relax. Well done. <laughs> Let's see how it's affected the scores. Well, Sam, the Kingfishers have 115 points, but still in the lead, the Dolphins with 145! The Kingfishers can catch up. We've seen it done before. As we play our final game before the chest quest, it's called Flip Your Lids. In this game, there are a number of barrels at the bottom of the pool, but only eight of them have floating boys inside. So the object of the game is for the contestants to dive under, flip as many lids as possible, and release as many boys as possible. Now, we play this game one team at a time. The Dolphins are in the lead, so they're going to go first. But while they're battling away down there, they will be distracted by the opposing team, in this case the Kingfishers, blasting them with these water cannons. There's a possible 40 points to be gained by each team here, but only a minute and a half to find them. So Dolphins, if you're ready, set to get wet! <laughs> See if the kingfishers can match that as they play flip your lids orange kingfishers
temperature, stand by. Ready, set, get wet! So the kingfishers have a lot of work to do here. If you're any good at maths, and believe me, it took me a while to work it out, you'll know that even if they score the maximum on this flip your lids game, they can't get past the dolphins, but there is still a lot to play for because if they can release all eight of these boys from the 15 barrels, they can actually gain two more prizes from the prize pile. And they know that, believe me, because they've done their sums and they know they've really got to go for this. Now I can see two boys floating up there, but an awful lot of lids. They've decided to go for it individually. There's not a great deal of teamwork here. They're not holding the barrel while the other one has the lid. They've just decided, I can do it on the own. Leave me to it, they're saying. Well, Jenny and Jonathan are pelting them with these water cannons, but it doesn't actually seem to make that much difference. The main time to get them is when they're coming up for air. You can whack them in the face with a load of water then. Oh, that was good off, isn't it? I've counted these boys. They've got one, two, three, four, five. They've got themselves another prize off the prize pile at the moment, but they need to get a couple more boys out. I can't see any more. Keep going, guys. They're discussing it now. I can see one, two, three, four, five. I can only see six. Oh, no, there's eight boys out. So before we check out the final scoreboard and see how many prizes they've won, just have a look at some of the underwater action as we play Flip Your Lids. Let's see the final scores. Well, Sim, here are the final scores. The Kingfishers have 155, but this week's chess questers are the Dolphins on 185! So, we now know who will be running the chest quest and looking for that star prize, but we have to say, Kingfishers, a fantastic job. Have you enjoyed your day here, Leon? Yeah, it's been great. Oh, good for you, good for you. And what about you, Sarah? Yeah, Had wonderful. a good day? Wonderful. Well, you don't go away empty-handed. No, no, not on this show. Do you have one each? A pen set, a football phone, swimming gear and a camera kit. Well done. And Good they've effort. been fantastic contestants, so swim for home, guys. It's been great having you. Let's hear it, please, for Sarah and Leon the Kingfishers! <laughs> Woo! So, time now for the Dolphins to get geared up. If you want to go off with a lane there, round you go. The Dolphins have to get their scuba gear on and their helmet on because they are about to take on the chest quest. But before I explain to you how the quest works, just brace yourself, prepare to be gobsmacked as we reveal today's fantastic star prize. And it is fantastic. Today's chess questers can fly to Cape Cod for a phenomenal New England holiday if they succeed on their quest. Now, to win that brilliant, brilliant holiday, all they've got to do is open this baby. This is the all-important chest. Problem is, it's secured at the moment by two chains locked with padlocks. So they need to find two keys that will open up the chest. So this is how it works. I will give Jonathan and Jenny their first keys on the quest. And in Jenny's case, because she's going to be up here on the shipwreck, she'll start off here at this chest. Now when she opens it, she'll find something inside. It could be something like this handle. Then that would take her somewhere else on the shipwreck, in this case, to the float. She puts the little handle on, she would open up the tap, and you can see the key would float up till she can grab it, and that will take her onto the next little challenge. There's a whole sequence of those to get through. All the while, Jonathan will be down under the water in his scuba gear, going through another whole set of challenges. Hopefully, the two of them will end up with two keys to open this baby and win the holiday. In fact, as we speak, Jonathan is being kitted up in his scuba gear. You can see him there. And just so we're sure nothing can go wrong under the water, because scuba diving can be a bit dangerous, we have our safety divers. Now, every time we play the chest quest, we have a different route. So let's find out what the route for the quest is today. Well, the first stop for Jenny is the treasure chest on the foredeck. Then, out front to open the anode. Back across the ship to blast those barrels. Then up to the book deck to crack open the captain's lockers. And then onto the ship's larder where she'll find her golden key. Meanwhile, down below, Jonathan must first open the sunken chest. Then, onto the sphere. 
Next stop, unlatch that heavy lead casket. Then, on to crack the safe to find his golden key. Well, our team is ready. Let's go, Matt. Give them lots of support. Jonathan and Jenny, the Davenport Dolphins! <laughs> Good. <laughs> you look a wee bit nervous there, Jenny. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> uh, are you confident you can do this? Yeah, we can do it. You've got three minutes to open this chest and really the prize of a lifetime, a trip to Cape Cod in America. Now, Elaine is just getting her fins on. She's got her air on her back. She'll go down in the water just to put the finishing touches to all the challenges that Jonathan will be taking on down in those murky depths by the harbour wall. Now, the way this works is I will give each of our contestants the first key on the quest. I have those keys here. Now, Jenny, there is your first key. And if Jonathan is almost ready, there's your first key there. Jonathan, is everything ready? This is our safety diver here, Rock Steady Eddie, we call him. How's everything looking, Eddie? He's ready to dive, now. He's ready to go. He's got his air, he's got his fins. You've each got the first key on your quest. Three minutes to find the keys that open the chest. We're all behind you. Let's give them a huge send-off as we start the chest quest in five, four, three, two, one, go! Tickets to Cape Cod for each of you, a holiday to the States for each of our winners. Jenny, how do you feel? Brilliant. And what about you, Jonathan? Fantastic. They have been great contestants. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you soon for more Get Wet. Bye-bye!